According to the latest information, so far over 35,000 migrants have entered Croatia since last Wednesday. Most of them have quickly moved through the country in their effort to reach the richest Western European and Scandinavian countries, crossing into Hungary and Slovenia. From Tovarnik on Croatia's eastern border, refugees are travelling to the village of Botovo on the Hungarian border, which continues to be open. The refugees then walk a few kilometres through fields, illegally entering that country. Meanwhile, a new group of 550 migrants arrived in 10 buses last night at the Terezino Polje border crossing with Hungary. They were given a police escort to the border on the bridge, after which the Hungarian authorities organized their onward journey with buses and trains. The situation on the Slovenian border at Bregana and Harmica has calmed down a bit. Over the last few days, a large number of migrants were trying to cross the border at these points. Most of them succeeded and are already at the border with Austria. However, railway transport between Slovenia and Croatia continues to be interrupted. EU interior ministers today are gathering in Brussels to try and reach an agreement on distributing 160,000 refugees within the bloc. The majority of member states want the Union as a whole to reach a consensus on the issue, although this won't be easy as most of the bloc's Eastern and Central European members are strongly opposed to the plan. The Hungarian parliament yesterday adopted a law which gives the government the authority to call out the army to handle the refugee crisis, including the issue of rubber bullets and tear gas. Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban said that Hungary's border with Serbia would be protected by the police, while the army would be necessary to protect the borders with Croatia and Slovenia. Meanwhile, Serbia has called on Croatia to reopen the eastern Bajokovo border crossing for freight traffic, threatening to otherwise seek international protection and introduce countermeasures. Croatia has responded that it will open the border crossing when Serbia stops sending migrants to Croatia. Yesterday, a coalition of right-wing parties led by the HDZ signed an agreement for the forthcoming parliamentary elections. In his speech, HDZ and opposition leader Tomislav Karamarko said that this patriotic coalition was the only option for Croatia's future economic prosperity. The regional Istrian political party, known as the IDS, or Istrian Democratic Assembly, will not remain in the Kukuriku coalition led by Prime Minister Zoran Milanovic and the SDP, and instead will join a new coalition made up of Zagreb Mayor Milan Bandic's 365 Labour and Solidarity Party, as well as five other smaller political parties. Sport and Ante Čačić has been appointed the coach of Croatia's national football team. The 61-year-old Čačić replaces Niko Kovac and the Croatian Football Federation's decision was unanimous. His first task is to take Croatia to the next year's European Championships. There are two crucial qualifiers remaining. The first against Bulgaria on the 10th of October and the second against Malta three days later. After six consecutive defeats, Zagreb's ice hockey team Medvez Chuk has recorded a victory in the KHL against Moscow's Vityaz. The score was 3-1. The Bears are currently in ninth place in the Western Conference with 16 points. Their next match is in two days' time against Dinamo in Riga. This afternoon's forecast calls for sunny weather with light to moderate cloud cover in places, especially towards the end of the day along the northern Adriatic coast, in higher areas and in central and northwestern regions. On the coast, a northeasterly Bura wind will weaken and turn to a westerly and southwesterly, and in places to a northwesterly wind, especially on the open seas. By the end of the day, there'll be a southeasterly Yugo wind on the northern coast. Highest daily temperatures will be between 18 and 23 degrees Celsius inland and between 23 and 28 degrees on the coast. Tomorrow it'll start off sunny with some early morning fog in places. During the afternoon and evening it'll cloud over from the west and rain is expected, possibly thunderstorms as well. It'll be raining for the next two days with heavier downpours in places and it will be colder. On the coast, there'll be a southeasterly Yugo wind tomorrow, which will strengthen, bringing clouds first to the northern coast and then to the south. There'll be rain and thunderstorms, especially on the northern coast. Rain is also expected on Thursday and on Friday in places.